Hi everyone and welcome for new paper session. So I think this is uh, the 10th recording there. I'm not sure. But anyway, today we will read another paper uh, published in 1995 and it's called Implementation of the Real-Time Functional Language Erlang on Massively Parallel Platforms with application to telecommunication services. So this paper is a kind of summary of the features added to make Erlang distributed system. Let's start with, this is a small one by the way, this is a really small one, like maybe six or seven pages, it will be really fast to read. Many real-time systems need a large amount of computational power. This may soon provide a larger market for parallel computers in the scientific, scientific computing area where most of them are used today. Examples of new and interesting areas of telephone switching system, image recognition, real-time databases, multimedia services and traffic guidance systems. Programming parallel computers for this and new application is often complex and error-prone. To alleviate this condition, Ericsson has developed a new non-lazy functional programming language called Erlang. This new language, which has already been used in several large projects, was designed to provide a good environment for building large, full-tolerant tolerant real-time application with explicit concurrency. Existing Erlang implementation run on uh, CSD computers together with Ericsson, we have developed a MIMD uh, version of Erlang initially for the Persitech GC Power Plus. This is one of the first implementations of a functional language used in industry on M, uh, MIMD computers. To benchmark the parallel Erlang version, we are using a telecommunication application developed by Ericsson. Uh, so MIMD computer is a multi, uh, I don't remember, I think it's multi, <coughs> multi core, a parallel uh, distributed system, but I'm not sure. Just check. Multiple instruction, multiple data. Okay. Introduction. In the near futures, oops, sorry. In the near futures, a parallel computer will be used for scalable multiprocessing real time application where there is an increasing need for computational power. Examples are computerized real-time driving assistance system in cars, multimedia services, real-time databases, picture processing on image recognition, telephone switching system, and so on. The potential market of such application will be much larger than the rather narrow area of scientific computing which currently dominates the parallel processing business. The implementation of Erlang for massively parallel MIMD platform is eventually aimed at this new multiprocessing real-time application area. We are in 1995 and every subject here are what we are looking today. We have the driving assistance system cars. So for example, with the Tesla uh, cars made we, by, um, by Elon Musk, uh, company, multimedia services, we already have with our phone, real-time databases, we have plenty of them, picture processing, so if you are a fan of artificial intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence uh, you will have uh, to deal with that, and the same for image recognition, so we have in 1995 if we were already talking about that, telephone switching systems and so on, so okay. Uh, Erlang is a new functional language designed for efficient programming of concurrent real-time distributed fault-tolerant system. The language assumes no shared memory and is thus uh, suitable for MIMD implementation. However, most current Erlang implementations run on single processor workstation where all lightweight processes are time charred. There is also a recent distributed version that runs on networks of workstation but no implementation is available for parallel MIMD post multiprocessor. All interaction between Erlang processes is by asynchronous message passing. Distributed system can easily be built in Erlang. Application written for, written for a single processor can be ported to run on networks of processors. 
Erlang was developed at Ericsson and LM10 Computer Science Laboratories and is now marketed by Erlang System AB. It has already been used to implement non-trivial telephone swi switching application by Ericsson. The language is described, uh, described in the, the first uh, uh, references. The objective of this work is to facilitate software development for parallel meme di distributed uh, memory platform by implementing Erlang in an efficient manner for massively parallel distributed memory architecture and demonstrate its usability for realistic software real-time application. Three Erlang implementations currently exist, a bytecode interpretive version, so this one is a jam I guess, a threaded code interpretive version which is fast, faster, this is a beam, and a compiled version which generates C code with some special tricks, so it's a uh, turbo Erlang. The last version produces the fastest executing code, which however takes much more space than the interpretive code. All three versions use mostly uh, the same runtime system for message pacing, IO, error handling, and so on. Uh, so this is a figure of Parsitec GC Power Plus in Nikoping, which has a total of 64 computational nodes. 128 processors on six parallel file system nodes. In the Erlang implementation, the user communicate directly with the master node, but all Erlang nodes that communicate with each other independently. So th this is a cluster. We have a node, we have another slave node, and all nodes can talk together and share uh, their information between them. The major portion of the work is implemented in implementing Erlang on the parallel platform concerns the runtime system. The method passing interface input output and link of lightweight processes are all part of the runtime system. Also communication between processor nodes on the parallel machine and the front end workstation need to be handled. The communication module previously, previously using TCP IP uh, for distributed Erlang on workstation has been replaced by a communication module suitable for internal communication within the MIMD machine. Also, part of the Erlang runtime library has been restructured for use on the Parix message based operating system, lacking Unix like features such as signals and fork joint style process semantic. In the Unix Erlang implementation, an important component called the Erlang Port Mapper Daemon, a PMD, runs on each workstation. This is essentially a name server that provides file descriptor for TCP IP and socket based communication between Erlang processes on different workstations. So, actually, uh, this is practically still the same. When you are starting Erlang, you will have a, a PMD uh, daemon running. This daemon has been eliminated in the parallel implementation. Instead, uh, instead, uh, message passing has been implemented using efficient synchronous communication over virtual links using the Perix primitive non-blocking send and receive. Node names used in our implementation are of the form node32 at Persitech for node32 or some other node, which is compatible with the name format of the Unix Erlang implementation. The number part of the node name is extracted and used to pass the message at the corresponding node. Erlang has built-in support for authentication by magic cookies. This is used to ensure authorization authorization interaction between distributed nodes. In our parallel implementation, all nodes are owned by the same user. Therefore, we provide a default cookie for all nodes at startup. This ensures complete access right between all nodes on the Parsitech machine and eliminate further checking. In the Unix Erlang implementation file, IO is handled by a separate process. This rather inefficient solution has been replaced by direct call to the underlying Parix operating system in our parallel implementation. Parix then dispatches the IO to the front end through remote procedure calls or send IO to the parallel file system nodes and application. Traditional telephone switching network are not intelligent. 
they have one primary task to connect telephone A to telephone B. During the 1960s and during the 70s, customers began to demand additional services. Customers want multi party calls, flexible billing, mouse calling, telephone voting, universal personal phone numbers, and a lot of other services. To be able to provide better services now on in the future, telecommunication company have developed the intelligent network concept. The goal is to create a distributed system where new services can be implemented swiftly and where the services can be tailored uh, for specific users. Intelligent networks consist of different kinds of nodes. The idea is that switches should do only the switching while higher level functions should be delegated to other nodes more suited for this task. For more information about in technology in general, see the, se sorry, see the second and third references. The application program selected for porting on oh. the application program selected for porting on top of the parallel airlong implementation is a simulator for an intelligent network service control system which previously has been implemented in Erlang by Ericsson Telecom AKT, BV in the Netherlands. An example of a service provided by such an intelligent network service control is telephone voting. Certainly thousands of calls must be serviced almost all the same time. This is a typical example where the scalable processing power provided by MIMG processor system is needed. For this application, the simulator for the intelligent network service control runs together with real switches or load generator programs to test the system. Okay, so just a quick summary. That means sometimes you have a lot of user needed uh, who needs to use one services, and in this case, you will need to um, find a way to distribute the computing and computers um, systems together so when you need to have a really huge important number of, of computation one system one server can do everything by itself so you need to sc scroll to a, a cloud of other computer or directly a cluster as, descri as described above, intelligent network consists of a number of nodes. Together, they implement the advanced features desired in the com telecommunication network by executing programs called flexible service profiles. These profiles are designed and verified using graphical tools. They are typically invoked when the user requests the user requests a service. The three most important node types in the simulator are the SFF, the SCF, and the SDF. The SSF, Service Switching Function, controls the operation of a telephone switch. Basic call processing is on led completely by the SSF, while more advanced services are on led by asking the SCF to take control of the call. The SCF Service Control Function under service by executing the flexible service profiles. The SDF service data function stores the profiles and other data needed when executing the profiles. Uh, the figure 3 shows a simplified view of the interaction between nodes. The SFF calls upon the SCF when the service is invoked. And the, NS and the SCF fetches and updates data items by contacting the SDF. In the current simulator, each SDF may serve many SCF, and each SCF may have many connected SSF. However, there may be only one SCF known by each SFF, oof, sorry, SFF, and only one SDF for each SCF. <laughs> so here are the figures. In order to adapt the uh, intelligent network simulator for execution on a parallel computer, one could parallelize the SCF internally by having a master SCF node that distributes connection from SFF to a number of worker SCF nodes. A simpler solution, which will also be more reliable, is to remove the restriction that each SSF only knows about one SCF. 
if HSF SFF is allowed to connect to any one of a number of different SCF nodes, load balancing is achieved without a major rewrite of the SCF code. Different ways to distribute calls between the SCF will be investigated. Okay, so it will be in random. Okay. With a lot of SCF nodes than before, there is a risk that the communication between the SCF node and SCF node becomes a bottleneck. To avoid this, caching will be used. Each SCF caches data based a fetch from the SCF. Both the profiles and other data that are not updated often, the works, this works fine. Data modified more often by SCF could however be a problem. Fortunately, Weeds are much more frequent than writes, so a simple cache invalidation protocol could be used. New or modified data is sent to the SDF, which then tells all other SDF to invalidate their copies. A scalable toy application. In order to get some results before the adaptation of the natural application is done, we have created a small example. This toy application uses task farming to sum a series of floating point numbers from 1 to 8000 with step of 1 in this case by dividing the interval between the worker processes this is truly a trivial task but the worker application could easily be replaced with codes that those more useful work as the figure 4 shows, this application scale linearly in the beginning, but the speed up levels off when the amount of calculation becomes, becomes too small compared to the amount of communication. So this is figure 4, and we have uh, the speed, we have the number of processor, and we have the linear curve here, and we have the curve with uh, so to speed up the elapsed time by processor. Conclusion Parallel computer usage will soon be dominated by scalable multiprocessing real time applications, where there is an increasing need for computational power. Since development of real time software is especially time consuming and expensive, it is imperative that such development is facilitated. The so work described here implementing an extending Erlang and telecommunication application for massively parallel platform is an important step in this direction. It is also one of the first examples of making functional language technology usable for large QL industrial real-time application on parallel platforms. So that was a really short one, but there is a lot of important stuff. So we are in 1995. In 1995, uh, the computer were not so cheap and only big companies and other industry uh, could have this kind of features and by reading this paper you can see that all the problems we had in the past we still have uh, them today and to be honest with you uh, when I can see this kind of uh, graph I already saw them uh, when reading some papers about the scalability of Erlang and the different processors and computers connected together to create a cluster. So, things are evolving and the numbers are growing faster than like, I don't know, maybe every year or maybe every two years. This curve uh, will be, will, will change, you know. And Having this kind of paper with this kind of conclusion, saying that we will need more computational power and things will be real-time software in the future, it's really true. Uh, actually, all the features from functional programming are becoming more, uh, more implemented in the classical language, like for example Java or Python. If you take a look at Python, the version 3.10 is implementing pattern matching with type and so on. So, what in, in 1995, the engineers behind this, uh, these papers, and I totally forgot to, to quote them, so Bechar Sudi, uh, Peter Fritzen, and Kent Engstrom were aware of 
uh, the future and we're anticipating what will be happen in the future and actually this work is really really well important one because uh, you know the MIMD I think I never work with this kind of uh, platform and you can easily create one only with Erlang and the uh, the main distributed features directly delivered with the main release and that's crazy because at this time you needed to have like a huge big really big platforms to execute this kind of of simulation so what 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 is my conclusion here uh, first like i said before it's it was a small papers but it's also a really interesting one because you can find lot of um, lot of comments uh, from the people who created a little bit of what we have today, and you should probably read it because you have also kind of a good practice and an idea of all the things we are working in the past and why they did that and in 1995 if we not about uh, sending messages for example with sms and so on but more to try to connect different uh, services to the current telecommunication uh, environment so that means when you call someone what you can do what kind of service you can add and so on and all those features can now be find in other services like for example whatsapp and so on so anyway it was a really short one and i think yeah keep yeah you should continue to read papers and academic papers so see you later bye